email to apologize for my last email. I'd like to apologize to the entire company for the email I sent earlier today. I did not mean to CC all. My email voiced concerns about specific departments that were not meant to be read by everyone. While I must be specifically apologized to those I admonished, I'm actually hearing from people not mentioned in the email that they feel left out of the party. <laughs> At the same time, those singled out hold that up as a badge of honor and proof that I'm a horrible boss. Let's be clear, I was merely communicating overall frustration with the negative direction of our business. The reference to the toilet was not to be taken literally. These figures of speech can be misinterpreted. Remember, in the course of our busy days, we've all found ourselves raising our poise, perhaps tossing off a euphemism, capturing our feelings in the moment. While making a point, you may also have, like me, thrown chairs across a conference room, or hurled a plate in the kitchen. <laughs> and just as I always clean up the shattered dishes and replace any chairs I destroy, so too must I own up to my acerbic language. Calling business development a bunch of lazy bastards was uncalled for when they were working so hard, despite the fact that they have not won a single new piece of new business in the past 18 months. I didn't actually mean they should go to hell and take all their shit with them. We may debate the existence of hell as an actual destination, but going there should not require taking anything with you. I mentioned everyone in marketing as vindictive and out for blood. In fact, they are not the only ones who are vindictive and out for blood. The whole company seems to thrive on bloodlust and vindictiveness, and perhaps I am responsible for this since circulating my memo, Objective 2017, Bloodlust and Vindictiveness. <laughs> Research and development should not necessarily be amputated like a gangrenous limb. Maybe we can spin them off as a separate division which can function autonomously. The work they've done is a necessary part of how the company evolves, even though we have yet to make a dime out of staring blankly out of windows. Now, we must acknowledge Operations has done everything they could to meet the impossible deadline for the product launch. Unfortunately, this meant long days and nights, lack of sleep, work over the weekends, no bathroom breaks, no opportunity to change into a fresh set of clothes, and last but not least, hiring practices which have become a national scandal. The legal nightmare created by hiring dozens of untrained school children from out of state who had gone missing will be difficult to defend. They've since been reunited with their families. The unlit basement workshop established to complete the work will be seared into the public memory for years to come. Images of that dingy space exposed on a TV special actually got Geraldo Rivera the first respect from the public in years. I was never a fan of his and since his move to Fox, even less so, but his work on the documentary Product Launch Death March deserves some credit. <laughs> Overall, this debacle reflects poor judgment and leadership. And when I say leadership, I don't mean me. While I may be the CEO, I see myself more as a facilitator, uh, if you will, or an enabler. But I don't mean that in the sense of how they use the word enabler in Al-Anon. You know, the whole devoted wife of drunk husband, he just won't quit and the wife puts up with him no matter how many times he breaks the promise and wrecks the car and staggers home late with some crack whore he met outside the bar, collapsing on the coffee table, knocking over the lamp, scaring the kids, and blaming the wife for not picking him up even though he insists he called to be picked up, but the wife knows he never did because he was in a blackout and the wife gives the crack whore taxi money to get home and finds a blanket and pillow for the husband so he can sleep it off on the floor on top of the collapsed coffee table. I don't mean that kind of enabler. <laughs> I enable the business to function because I sign your checks. Please be advised, in addition to CCing everyone in the company, I inadvertently wrote to my Uncle Phil, my estranged sister Sheila, who I haven't talked to in 12 years, and the electrician rewiring our shore house. Do not write back to them. I owe the electrician money, and Sheila has a mean temper. The funny thing is, the email you all saw was not intended to be read by anyone. The writing was part of a journaling exercise prescribed by my new career coach, Constance Brilliance. Constance has been extremely helpful to me with an exercise that brought up feelings suppressed, suppressed for some time. I must have copied and pasted that journaling exercise into the email body with the subject line, out of the country for the next two weeks. I should 
add that my plans have changed and I will now be out of the country indefinitely. <laughs> I will CC all of you when I have a return date soon. <laughs>